Hello, I'm Barry Crabtree, your certified arborist, and we are here at a customer's property that we have been asked to come to to solve some tree problems. We originally got this as a referred lead from another tree contractor, and what we're finding is typical problems associated with covered and smothered root collars and compacted critical root zones where the trees do not have sufficient area for nutrients and water to sustain their very big size. We'll give you a look at these trees as we go through, but let's go over to the trees right now and I'll show you what we're gonna do and you'll see what they look like in their um, restricted uh, conditions and we're gonna straighten that out. This is a Carolina ash tree and there is a concern for this tree because we have some discoloration of the leaves. We have some curling and folding and scorching at the borders. And we have found that there is a rhino beetle and uh, some other uh, insects that typically affect this, uh, the uh, uh, um, uh, 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 biological operations of this tree. And we think that we're gonna find some problems. Now, what, in addition, when we came and look, as you can see, the root collar is covered and smothered. This is great at a, a Waffle House, but it doesn't work on trees. And what we're almost positive we're going to find is that we've got uh, a, a pretty active uh, insect population. We've got some girdling roots. We've got some uh, uh, deformations that we're going to uh, find here. And I told the uh, owner that I reserve the right to change my mind should I find any particular conditions once we do a visual inspection of this area. But we're going to do root collar excavations on this tree and the two next to it and there is one of equal size behind it. And we agreed to these four trees because they are on the upwind side of their uh, lakefront house and are uh, actually pose the greatest uh, danger of a fall risk. In other words, if these trees fall, they're going to do a lot of damage to personal property, housing, uh, cars parked in the driveway, and so forth. So they deserve to be examined and have a proper hazard assessment. And in order for us to do that, we have to be able to visually inspect the anchors. Anchors hold the tree down. All these anchors are covered and smothered. We're going to look at them very carefully. We're going to spray this white oak here with a special treatment because we found that there were bleeding lesions in this area right here and these lesions are precursor symptoms to sudden oak death. We have treatments that are effective at arresting this condition. We don't want it to spread. We think we can stop it now. Uh, this uh, whole job has uh, been priced at uh, uh, less than $1,000. It's not real expensive, but the costs of removal of just one of these, should they fail, would be $1,200 or more, depending on what kind of a bid that you've got uh, uh, for this tree. And we're um, uh, going to uh, develop a uh, uh, critical root zone here where all of these trees can uh, uh, coexist together. We're going to do our typical radial trenching. We're going to fill it in with NutraSmart and uh, earthworm castings. We're going to inoculate it with a biostimulant mixture that encourages a microbial population of bacteria, fungus, algae, and, and many other things too numerous to name uh, here. We'll give you a listing uh, in a sidebar on this video if you're interested. So stay tuned. We're going to show you the whole job through and uh, 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 give you an idea of the benefits that we're going to achieve after that.
right, go to either side and let's go another couple of feet further out right on there. Hey, leave that one short. Make the other ones longer. Okay, do that. Spray the again. Okay. You're going to spray with a backpack spray. We go with another style of spray because we got a different formulation. We're going to use the tip of the collar for some of that uh, uh, block of secure. Come right now, show you something that we found in the uh, Jesse. This is a solid anchor. We're uh, inspecting this visually to make sure that what we're seeing here is not decayed and rotten and incapable of conducting its uh, job, which is to hold this tree in place. And I'm following it out on out to here, and it's solid, as you can hear, all the way out. And so as near as I can tell, we're solid. As you can see, we're. I'm having. I'm putting all of my weight on this, and and, and the uh, probe is not. See, as you can see, can you see that dial? Okay, we're going into the red, which means we got a sufficient amount of pressure. I think that had we not exposed this and arrested any further decay, we might be subject to some. Uh, decay, but right now I think we've arrested that by exposing it to air and light. And uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, prune a few of the uh, holly roots from around here on this side. And when we feed, we'll feed right here on top of this. Yeah. I think the root comes off to the side here, yeah. and what you can do is go out that way and then use your dirt to fill back in. <coughs> okay, very nice. All right, this is part of our new view of tree and landscape care. And we call it new view because this is what we know works. What we've done is we've exposed the actual tree roots. You can see them here, these are nice big wiry roots. Some of these roots belong to the grass. A lot of them that are thicker and bigger like this are indeed tree roots. And we've exposed those and we've taken a combination of earthworm castings and NutraSmart. Uh, this is a lignite with a yeast um, coating on each of these uh, little granules that gather nitrogen from the air and put, uh, fix it in the soil. It's actually uh, quite a uh, uh, efficient way to feed trees and we've made sure by trenching down to the roots we've applied the food right into the critical root zone where we know that it'll be used and when we cover this up and we uh, then uh, reclaim this area as a mulched area of the critical root zone, a dedicated spot to the operations of this tree alone, we will then have 
a, um, uh, a uh, supplementary area of feeding so that this ash tree has additional nutrients that it can use and incorporate into its operations to get healthier, get thicker, get more full, get bigger leaves, recover from the conditions that we have observed. And this radial trenching in a spoke pattern all around this tree uh, uh, coupled with some root pruning. Now we didn't bid the root pruning in on this job because we didn't know what we were going to find once we exposed it. What we're going to do is wait for those to dry and then at some point in the future come back and remove those to clear up the collar. You can see a little bit of uh, girdling roots. There's a little bit of damage on the other side that is still very solid. All anchors are intact. We have deemed this tree to be uh, um, uh, uh, a reasonable risk to have close to the house. We're feeding it and we are uh, supplementing all of what it has been deprived of by competition from the grass, competition from the hollies, and competition from other trees, and the application of chemicals into this area here that have hurt its microbial populations. And so this will become smart landscape care and it is directed toward the concept of cheap to keep trees. We do not want to have to spend money every year maintaining these trees. We want to do it on their own. That's what Smart Landscape Care is all about.